My name is Aaron, and I like to fix stuff. Today we're going to be working on this Toro 832 riding lawnmower. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, picked up this riding lawnmower last year, I think. It was free, donated. It came with the... I keep wanting to say Husqvarna, but the... Scott's lawnmower that we did earlier this year. Uh, guy told me that of the two, this one was in better condition and it actually ran. We were able to get the Scott's fixed up. Got that sold. So hopefully this will be a simple repair. We'll see. Overall, body looks in pretty good condition. Seat does not. I like these rear engine riders because for the most part they're pretty accessible. Don't got to do a whole lot to get at stuff. Uh, tires are all low, but they seem to be in fairly good condition. So hopefully we can just blow this back up. Deck. At least from the outset, it doesn't appear to have any huge holes. I think this is, uh, what is it, 32 inch? All right, I wanted to get the cover off just so we had access to the flywheel. Yeah, this thing is, well, there's a little bit of movement in here. So, before I force anything, I want to get, I want to get the plug out and get some oil down in there. Just to help those rings out. If there's rust in there and you try to force it, those rings will break. Then you got bigger problems. So let me get some oil and I'll do that. All right, let's uh, we'll get this plug out. And that'll give us kind of an indication of what's going on inside the combustion chamber. Carbon, but not rusty, so that's good. If the engine had been underwater and the rings were all rusted up, then I would expect our plug to be rusty. So that's a good sign. I'm just going to put some oil in here, just some light oil, um, ATF, PB Blaster. I'm using WD-40. Just to uh, kind of help those rings. It feels like it's right at top dead center too. So it is seized, but that could be the piston rings. It could be the valves. It could be the deck belt, dry belt, a lot of different things. So we're just going to kind of go, I don't want to force this right now. We'll just let that oil kind of sit and work its way around there just to help. We could take this guard off and then we'd have access to a nut to get a socket on there to try to spin this a little bit easier. Um, I think it would be wise for us to try to get the deck off just to eliminate that as a possibility. So while that's sitting there, we can work on that. All right, I inflated the tires. Um, we'll let that sit for a little bit just to see if they hold. And I wheeled the machine kind of out of the mud a little bit. So let's work on getting this deck out. There's the back just rests on this post here and it slides and then on the front there's a little all right on the front let's see if we can get this brake yeah we gotta we gotta get the brake out of the way To get the belt off. 
How do we do that? I gotta hold this. And then at the same time, work this belt off. Oh yeah, this belt is rust welded into place. There we go. Alright. I think we're off. Okay, there's that side. And that side. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Definitely some rust. But the good news is it feels solid. Let's flip it and see what the bottom side looks like. More of the same. But uh, I think that should clean up okay. It is, however, completely seized. So, hopefully, that's why the engine wouldn't turn over and it's not internal. Nope, <clears throat> no luck. All right, so it's not the deck. That's a bummer. Sometimes when the be the belts are rust welded to the pulley like that, it'll prevent the engine from turning over. So that's not the case, unfortunately. Oh, there we go. You know what? I think it is the belt because the the belt is moving underneath it. So the drive belt is still connected. And surprisingly, these belts look okay. That's kind of good news. But the good news is we got some movement out of here. Not good movement, but there we go. There we go. Oh, there's a, there must be a, a rusty spot in the cylinder wall because it keeps hanging up. Right there. So I think we're just gonna work this a little bit. I'm gonna get a screwdriver, take the screen off. We'll get a socket on here just to slowly spin that over. All right, let's get a socket on here. Just for a little bit better leverage. The plug is out. So we're not fighting compression. It's just stuck right there. Yeah, I really don't want to force it. Let's see, now that we got it moving, let's try a little bit more oil. Oh, you know what? 
I'm not even positive the piston's moving. I got a screwdriver in the plug hole, and I do not believe it's moving. Unless I'm not quite getting it in there, but. Wonder if the connecting rod broke. And that's what it's hitting. When it reaches the piston, I don't know. Hmm. So here's our options. We the only way to definitively tell is to remove this engine and split it open. Not really what I wanted to do, but. I'm kind of at a loss, I think, considering what is undoubtedly going to be some internal scoring on the cylinder wall. We're probably going to have to rehone this anyways. So, it would make sense. We can, uh, we'd have to drain the oil. You can take the fuel tank off and remove some of the bits and bobs just to uh, make it a little bit easier. But man, that's a bummer. I think before I do anything though, I should probably give this thing a bath. I don't want to be messing with this in the shed with all this gunk on here. So let me get this cleaned up and I will bring you guys back. Wants to have it apart in, in the shed. Well, it was a, a lot more work to get to this point than I thought it was going to be. I had to uh, pressure wash the whole machine a couple of times and uh, I flipped it over to the bottom side, just caked in grease. I'll show you why later, but I was able to get the engine out with uh, the double stack pulley in uh intact i was not able to get it off while it was sitting on the machine it's stuck in place so we'll see what we can find out here um that being said i'm not going to be able to get the sump cover off because it won't be able to slide off the bottom so let's start by taking the head off and we'll just we'll see what's going on here okay and we'll progress as needed so we've got a whole bunch of half inch bolts that we gotta take out. I think may or may not have a gasket set for this engine. But we'll see. So These two for this mount, those are the shorter two. Keep those separate. Everything's wet just from me washing. Otherwise, these other bolts appear to be the same size. Let's see if I can get that one on there. Nope. I'm going to take this little, uh, I'm not sure what that was for. Is that for the spark plug? I can just slide it to the side maybe. 
So that gets rid of that. Now, that, yeah, we probably are going to want to take that out. Hmm. Is that going to be 7 sixteenths? It's nice because so far everything's been standard. We're not jumping back and forth between metric and standard. So there you can see we got uh, we got some stuff going on here. Whole lot of aluminum corrosion. These valves have got to get cleaned up. I'm willing to bet that one's stuck. Let's clean up some of this gunk. This tin is probably caked in more grease. Yeah, we're stuck up at the top dead center. So when we spin it, do we get, oh, we get movement. So where are we hanging up here? No, we're not. Oh, right there. We dropped the valve. This valve is not moving. And it's stuck. So, we're already in here. I, I guess that's good because we don't have to necessarily take the sump off. We'll just clean everything up. I'll take the, we'll have to take off the air cleaner, the muffler, the carburetor to get at the valve cover. Get that out, see what's going on, and uh, try to get this valve loosened up. I don't really want to pry on it, but we'll just, yeah. we'll see what's going on there, but I'm going to put it at the top dead center so we try not to get a whole lot of stuff in there. And then uh, we get a rag. Just start cleaning some of this stuff up. It's funny, you, you take the time to clean everything on the exterior and you think you do a good job and then you open it up and it's just as filthy. I did drain the oil, nothing remarkable, um, no metal shavings or anything, so that's good. Just some degreaser. I'll, I'll clean all this up with the wire wheel to get all the carbon off while I'm in here, but uh, I just wanted to get like the, the main grease off first so it's not flinging around. And then, I suppose, let's get this guy off. There's a 5 sixteenths mold here to get this cover off, just to help us finish cleaning. Get all that stuff out of there. Yeah, this, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize it at first when I was looking at this machine, but it's uh, gear driven. There's a Running off the crankshaft, there's a belt that goes to the transmission, which is up under the seat. It's this pulley here. And that drives a chain gear to the wheels. So that was kind of cool. But because of the chain gear, I'm assuming people have been lubricating the chain gear. And that is just flinging grease everywhere. So... That's the cause of all of this. And it's like, how do you, you know, how do you do a sufficient job of getting all of this out? Because it's just packed and saturated. I mean, really, you gotta get it degreased and pressure washed a whole bunch of times and air it out. Blow it out with some compressed air. Just it's gonna take a while, that's for sure.
I just like working on stuff when it's clean. It's so much nicer to not be filthy. And it's easier to clean it now while it's off the machine. Like if I was going to go... I always like cleaning stuff before I sell it. And it's hard to get all this, all the nooks and crannies when it's on the machine. So just take some time here to clean the stuff out. Like I said, I'm going to take off. I'm going to set that aside. Let's spin this around and we'll see what we can do from here. The valve cover is back underneath, right behind the carburetor here. So we're going to have to buzz all this stuff out. Uh, where do you want to start? I suppose let's take, it's just kind of hard. I got to do it kind of sideways because with this uh, pulley stack on here, I can't uh, set it up as it normally sits. So it's just kind of a different orientation. And I'm sure that I got some water in here when I was pressure washing it because I was I had to do a lot of washing. So let's get these out. That one. I'm hoping that's all it is, just a stuck valve. Because then should be fairly easy to fix that up. So there's that. We'll need to get a new air filter just because that one has been saturated. Um, carburetor. Can we get that off? I can only get at the one screw here. The other one is up underneath here. Yeah, muffler first. It did have a gasket. It's nice that that came apart fairly easily. Oh, carburetor. I'm not sure what size that's going to be. Half inch maybe? Is that what I have on here? Seven sixteenths is on here. That's too big. Three eighths, maybe. I don't even know. What, oh, there. I can't even get that on there. <laughs> okay, let's try. It does have uh, slots for a screwdriver, so it's. Yeah, there we go. This one is a little bit gummy. Okay. Carburetor screws. Now we've got We've got our breather going to the valve cover. That's off. And oh weird. We've got two linkages plus plus the governor is like connected directly to it. That's kind of weird. I can't there's a lot of corrosion coming out of here too let's see here what's the best way I 
I don't really want to mess with the governor if I don't have to. It doesn't even seem like it's just rotating on this governor arm back here. So I'm not sure what that's all about. We'll uh, see if I can get a wrench back on there. What is it? 5 sixteenths maybe? I'm sure we'll have to go through this carb too. I didn't uh, didn't even check it yet because there wasn't really much point if the you know if the engine needed some more serious repairs. But that'll be something we'll have to go through, especially considering all this corrosion is coming out of here. That's Kind of odd. All right, we'll take a look at our linkages. This one, there's only one hole right there. This one, same thing. The spring goes through the bigger hole on the bottom. And we're off. Okay, we'll set that aside for now. And are these going to follow it? This one will. This is just a choke, so that sits in there. That one's probably good. So let's see if we can break open the valve cover. See what's going on. I'm going to wipe some of that stuff off here first, though. It's pretty gross. Kind of weird. I wonder. I wonder if we snapped the valve. Because I would think if the valve was stuck, I would think that it wouldn't be moving at all. And we didn't. I mean, I didn't put like a ton of force on it to get it to move. So I'm just kind of curious why. What happened? This guy should just be retained there. Okay. Let's breather valve. Let me get you down. We'll take a good look. We'll spin it over and see what's going on. Uh oh. Our lifter. Okay. There we go. I thought we had a camshaft problem, but our lifter is just sticking. And it's not pushing the valve. Hmm. You can see up in there, there's a decent amount of corrosion. So what I'm gonna do is, I suppose we can, I, d I was gonna put the cover back on the valve, the valve cover, but just to keep it clean, but I'll clean that out afterwards. I wanna just, there's a little lip of corrosion up here on the top, and I'm gonna clean up all the surface. I don't know if I wanna lap the valves. We'll see, I gotta get this one moving first. 
Uh, while it's up, though, I could probably just clean this out a little bit. Or, I suppose, while the spring is compressed, we could even take the keeper off. Just so we're not fighting as much. Let me work on just cleaning some of this. Cleaning some of this up so we're not making things messier than it already is. I'll bring you guys back in just a minute. All right, I got it cleaned up fairly well. And I'm just going to spray some PB Blaster. Try to get this valve moving. I'm start with a rubber, you know, one of these soft mallets. Starting to move. And then we can try, yeah. I want to work it up and down, but man. Okay. Moving. All right, now we're getting some movement, good. Still sticking though. So I think I'm gonna probably have to take this valve out and uh, clean it up. But I had to get it moving anyways just to get it out even. So. Could either keep working it or just take it out because like right now it'll go up but then it sticks open so let's take it out not a ton of rust on here but just enough to get that to stick so we'll clean up all this Check it out. The seat doesn't look too bad, but I might go ahead and lap this valve just because we can, because we're in here. Get that cleaned up and we'll take a look. Okay, we're all put back together here. I did lap the valve and uh, got everything cleaned up pretty well. You can see it's returning now. I did throw some light oil in the valve guide just to help that travel smoothing up, smoothing, get smoother. So it's working pretty well. Unfortunately, I did destroy the valve cover gasket, so I got to get a new one of them. And the head gasket looks okay, but I'll see if I have one of these. If not, I'll probably have to order one of those. Uh, I did have an exhaust gasket for the muffler. Uh, let's see here. I still have yet to go through the carb. That'll be next. I'm sure we're going to need some parts there. Just for just for giggles, let's, uh, let's see what this bowl looks like. We know that we had... We know that we had water... Coming in the intake. Let's just see what this. Oh, it's rusty. Rusty already. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yum. That's going to need some work. Thanks. Oh, I don't know. This one might be. Yeah, our floats stuck. Kind of 
kind of moving. I don't know if it's the our little float pin or if it's the needle underneath, but this thing is nasty. So I don't know if that's going to come back. I mean, there's just rust and fuel remnants. That's pretty bad. So I think what I'll do is I don't even know if it's worth trying to get this apart yet. Maybe we should soak the whole thing. I mean, we could probably, well, let's see if we can get some of these. Let's see if we can get some of it apart. Because it would be nice. I'm just about done for the day. But it would be nice to just throw these in the ultrasonic cleaner and let them sit overnight. So that way they're good to go for tomorrow. Let's see if this guy will come out. I get it. I think we did. Yep, I don't think that was running. Look at that. You see in there, there's even the big orifice is plugged. So that's going to need to get cleaned. Throw the bowl in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, motion tube. That's going to have to come out, but I'm not sure how to get at it. Maybe this top. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's that. That's open. And I don't even know if... Yeah, I guess we're not seized. This has got to come apart, though. Like, how do you do the... the butterfly valves? Like, how would you install them? For assembly, because it's it's filthy in there. I don't know how I'm gonna clean that out. Um, let's try. Let's try to get the float out. I don't know if we're gonna have much luck with this. Any little hammer. So I want to be careful that I don't. I've done it before where you, you know, you're trying to get this pin out and you break these tabs off. Then it's pretty much done for. And I do not want to have to get a whole new carb for this, so. And I, this style of carb, I don't have a replacement for. So, and maybe we could just put a different style, like a more standard style on here. I don't know. But this one we have, so let's try to not break it. Use this pick. I 
There we go. Okay, there's our pen, float, and needle. And of course, this is the kind that's got the lovely spring that I always struggle with. I don't hear anything shaking inside though, so maybe it'll clean up. Maybe. All right, I think that is it. There's this little rubber, not really a gasket, but a seal for the air cleaner. I would like to get that off so it doesn't warp in the ultrasonic cleaner. There we go. That comes off. This gasket. Uh, I, I'm not going to have one of these, I'm sure of it. Well, it's just, we'll see. Bowl gasket, same thing. That is more than likely needing to be replaced anyways. Yeah, that's just junk. Okay, no. Just make sure we're not missing anything. This is that bolt for the governor, which doesn't even go to anything. So that's not even a governor. It's just a bracket. Weird. I thought that was... Yeah, the governor arm is back here. When I saw this, I was like, oh, it's a governor arm. Nope. Okay. Well, that makes it easier. So let me throw some of this stuff away. I will soak this stuff. I got to get a valve cover gasket, bowl gasket, this intake gasket, and a head gasket. And I think that's it. I will bring you guys back after we get some parts. So I've ordered parts for the engine. It's going to be a couple days before they get here. So I figured we'd start working on this stack in this fully is seized, the whole spindle is, so we'll bust it off and see if we can free this up. Now that we're getting some movement, we can try to soak the threads a little bit. When in doubt, we can always put some heat on it. This should cause the, the nut to expand. to help us get over those last couple threads. If I can get my torch to stay lit. So hopefully we can get this fully to pop off. It's going to be a little tricky. If we can 
put a little bit of uh, pressure behind it. Not on the lip here, because that'll deform it. But back here towards the center. You can thread this nut back on maybe. Because we're going to give it a, a, a whack with the uh, hammer. And I don't want to damage the thread. So we'll go like that. Moving. Hard part is that the brake is on. I think we got it. So let's take this nut off again. That's going much better. Pulley comes off. So hard to say if we're if it's this spindle here that's seized. Maybe we can get a wrench on here. There's two flats. So maybe we can get a wrench on here and work it back and forth. With a 5 8 wrench, we can get on this flat. Now that we don't have the brake to fight us, and we can get, we got movement. I just don't know how what the longevity of that's going to be. There's a whole bunch of debris under here. The bottom side has a cup, but it just kind of holds all the dirt in here. It seems kind of odd. Odd design, but I just want to see if we can work this so that way it can spin, so we can kind of assess the condition of these bearings it you know it wouldn't certainly wouldn't hurt to replace them and we still might because it doesn't seem the greatest it is getting easier but oftentimes on the bearing uh, race there's going to be a number, if I, if I happen to have this bearing size, then I will replace them, but I don't see one here. It might be on the other side. Let's just give it a good cleaning. And then, maybe we could try to, lube it up but judging by the amount of friction that was in here I don't really have much hope for this coming back like that's still a lot of drag you should be able to with the blade here I'm just reaching underneath yeah that's a that's still a lot of drag so what we can do, since we have this side exposed, let's try, see if we can get this whole spindle to pop out. And then we can take the bearings out and assess them a little bit better. And this should, all things go according to plan. This should, when I drive this down, it should pop out the bottom. There we are. Here we go. So we got our blade. There's a spacer on the bottom side, but it's stuck here anyways. This is that cup that was holding 
Oh no, this is actually part of the deck. That's even weirder. We'll flip it over and take a look, but now let's see. Bearings might be a little bit trickier to get out. You can see that normally this interior shaft is not the same diameter, so you can you can get a punch on there and drive one side out. It looks like there's a a spacer that it's kind of moving around inside. So I might be able to get a punch and drive the bottom one out, flip it over and do the same thing to the, to the top. The spacer is free in there. Yeah, there's just there's a lot going on with those bearings. So let me get a punch and we'll work on getting those out. So I just want to try to catch the bottom lip. I'm not sure if that's the bearing or not. No. It's really weird. Um, on the upper side, it looks like it's just the spacer and then the race, but I can't tell on the bottom side. Uh, there, there might be a, a washer, and that's what I'm hitting. I need that, that to move out of the way, but... I can't see down there well enough to. Well, it might be the bearing. I don't know. It might just be in there. And yeah, this this will probably destroy the bearings, but I don't think that they're going to be coming back anyways. Oh, you know what? We should probably flip it over and take a look because there might be a snap ring. Let's do that. I'll make some room. Here's the bottom side. Looks like a seal here on the bottom. And that is destroyed. Yeah, there's a snap ring right there. So that's why that's not coming out. Um, oof, that might be tough too. But from here, Maybe we can get the top bearing out. Because I don't think there was a snap ring on that side. That one came out somewhere. Oh, it's not quite out. Top bearing is out. Doesn't feel super growly, but there's just way too much resistance on there. This is a 204 2 RSH. I might have these ones. That would be cool. I gotta get some snap ring pliers to get this side out, and it looks like their spacer fell out too. Look at that thing. So it looks like we dropped the bearing inside and it's been chewing up. I wonder, both sides are, both seals are intact on this bearing, but that sure is what that looks like. Let's um, 
We get a snap ring pliers and then we'll get this side out. This looks pretty rusty, so I might have to fight with this a little bit. coming. There we go. Now, this bearing should be able to pop out either side. I think the way you would put it in, uh, you would, I guess it doesn't matter, you could pop it in this side and then put the snap ring in and then drive it back towards that snap ring. But this is the shorter distance. So let's see if we can drive it out this way. This one is better. Both sides of the seal are intact on this one too, so maybe it was a previous bearing that went bad. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll clean out this and check to see if I have those other bearings. We got some parts in, so let's get to work reassembling. I like to use this Permatex Ultra Slick just to help things stay lubricated. Granted, we didn't do a full disassembly, but they are gonna be less lubricated than normal, I guess you could say, on initial startup when we go to fire this thing up again. So just on these valve guides, on the valves themselves, on the lifters, just a little bit, doesn't take a ton. And then once we get some oil back in the crankcase, we'll spin it over by hand just to get some oil splashing around. Knock on wood, you know, this has helped me prevent any damage during the first fire after an engine reassembly. So that's pretty good. I don't think we got to do much more than that because we didn't bust anything open on the inside. So now our valve cover can go on. We did have to get a new valve cover gasket. And then this lead wire just tucks under this little lip there. And you've got two 516 screws. Might have to back you up here. Okay, there's one. I'm still trying to find like an optimal place to have you guys mounted during when I'm working on the bench here. Cause I, I thought that I just have a vice or a vice, a file clamped to the top here on this joist. And yes, I have run, walked into this thing and bumped it many, many times. And I know it's not ideal, but it's metal. So my magnetic uh, camera mount holds to it pretty well. So it gets a good top view, but not so much when I'm working on the sides. Uh, what else? We got a new 
head gasket. Like so. I did go through and clean this up as best I could just to get the fins clean. Took off as much carbon as I could on the bottom side just to make sure it's all nice and flat. This one doesn't have any um, guide pins or dowels to line it up. And let's see here, we had these two. Now I'm second guessing, I feel like they're on, it was on those two. I don't remember. I don't remember which way I had it facing. If it was facing me, no. I haven't moved it, have I? No. Was it those two? Like that? Hmm. No, that doesn't line up. It has to be those two. Hmm. I'm going to have to check the footage because I don't recall. But these are the only two holes that line up. Alright, so I, I did have to spin it around. Apparently I had it sit in the other direction. So these are going to go to 15 foot-pounds. And I think I'm going to do like a little bit of touch-up paint. But I'm not going to go crazy on it. Mostly because I'm having a hard time getting it like really clean. It would be handy if I had a parts washer. It's just there's so much grease on everything that it's proven to be troublesome to get it all cleaned up. And then we can get a muffler on. I still have to go through the carp, so we're not going to get started with that yet. I think we'll probably, probably get the muffler on, then maybe we'll get the engine back on the machine. And... Um, work on the carburetor just to get some some of the stuff off the bench give us a little bit more room and that goes on like so although yeah, we had to get, we had to take this off in order to get these, uh, the carburetor mounted underneath here. Yeah, so I guess we'll leave this off for now too. But let's see, we can uh, try to set this up yeah I still have a lot of
cleaning to do like here on the dipstick. It's got a whole bunch of greasy residue. So I'm going to take some time just to clean things out on the, uh, underneath the shroud here. And then we can work on getting the, uh, the shroud back together. I got a new air cleaner. Also we got bowl gasket for the carburetor, intake gasket. We got new ignition switch we can put on. And we got new bearings for the deck. So let me just clean some of this up and then we'll go ahead and try to throw it on the machine. So we got things put, starting to come back together. We got the four seven sixteenths screws for the shroud. Two in the front, two in the back. Uh, there's one five sixteenths on top here that holds the dipstick tube. And then we got to get the four little screws for the grass guard. I said four, three. I think I'm, I'm probably going to leave it off for now because I do want to. Just hit this with some black paint. I'll probably take the air compressor, blow it off, get as much dirt like this stuff. I gotta clean that up still. Get as much dirt off as I can so the it's not gonna look great, but it will at least protect it. I already have a home for this machine once we get it running. And uh, I know that the new owner is not going to be super picky about paint. So no restrictions there. Um, now we got this little tin. You got to clean that up still. And that'll go underneath. Let me clean that up. That's gross. I just hit the engine block with some black paint, try to get that clean. While it's drying, we can get this new ignition switch in. I don't know that this switch is bad, but I none of my spare keys fit it. So I just got a whole new one that came with keys. So I'll hang on to this one for a part. And hopefully we'll use it in the future. So this is, this is just a five post key terminal to receive the... Oh, see, that's... That ain't gonna work. It's, oh, it's gotta go that way. There you go. Momentary panic. It had a flat on one side, so it can only go in one uh, orientation. Which is fine. So after this is in, we can get the carburetor put back together, and then hopefully by then the paint will be dry. We'll probably have to hit that with another coat. But it already looks way better. It's super windy and I don't have my mic, so it's probably going to catch a lot of wind. And this should just plug in. Not a lot of wiggle room back here, though. That one looks like it's bent a little bit. And there we go. Okay. Perfect. Key switch is good. I, I still don't know anything about the relays or if 
we've got um, fuses or safety switches. I have not gotten to any of that yet. So we might have more to deal with. We're just trying to start with the stuff that we know and go from there. So let's hit that carburetor. It came out looking better, but that's not saying a whole lot because it looked pretty bad before it went in. So I just want to take a minute to do some light scrubbing. The ultrasonic cleaner works well, but it doesn't um, it doesn't remove everything. So you still have to come back and do some manual scrubbing. The nice thing is that, at least in this circumstance, it does a good job. I had to run it through probably like three three cycles, I think, of a half hour each. So with that much heat and that much time and the uh, caustic nature of the cleaner kind of strips the paint off. And that might not always be great, but in this case, I was going to touch up the paint anyway, so it kind of makes my job easier. I could see that being a pain, though, if you didn't want to do that. Obviously, I'm getting paint and debris everywhere. I will blow this out with some car cleaner and then just some compressed air. But it's way easier to clean it now than after it's on the machine. I don't know, I'm just going to have to blow out the inside because there's not really any way that I can get in there to clean it. I'm going to do that, I'm going to blow all the stuff off and then we can start putting it back together. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get too far because we sprung a leak in our float right here it's all cracked so that's no good I'm gonna have to see if I have another one or I'll have to order one so let's see here what do we got oh you know what I still have the bowl itself in the carb cleaner and that thing looks about as poor as you would expect I don't know if that's gonna come back I mean it is it's nasty in there I'm gonna hit this on the wire wheel and see if I can clean up any of that. It's certainly not perfect. There's still some stalactites in here, but... Wait, wait. Stalagmites? Tights hang down, right? I don't know. Stalag there's still some crud in the bottom. But there's nothing loose. And it doesn't appear that there's any holes. So we'll run it. I don't have another uh, bowl of this size. So we'll see... We'll see what we get. Um, let's see here. We can go this jet, the main jet, the screwdriver. Still gotta check on the float to see if I have one that size. So 
This guy goes in here. And this one goes in here. We'll go all the way in and then we'll back it out. One, two, one and a half turns and we'll start there. Um, this, all right, it's not really, I mean, I guess it's kind of a gasket. This little rubber thing goes on top here where it meets the air cleaner. So I guess it's a, like a seal. That's that. Now we've got our pin, which I'm going to try to find a new one of those too because that one's super cruddy. So I got to get a float and a pin and that's it right floating a pin put this guy back on and we should be good to go so here's how it looks after a little bit of paint hides a lot of the blemishes once you get real close you can see you know leftover rust spots and whatnot but it looks better I'm happy with it. Um, I'm gonna go try to throw this on the machine, but it's so windy out here, you guys aren't gonna be able to hear anything. So I think I'm just gonna fast forward to once this is on, there's a little bit of monkeying around with uh, belt guides and whatnot. I'm just gonna flip the whole thing up, uh, throw that in there, and hopefully we don't have any problems, so. I will bring you back here in just a minute. So here's where we're at. It's a little tricky to get this all back on, which is why I couldn't really film it. Plus, like I said, the wind is just crazy today, but um, engine mounting bolt here, down there. There's this one, right there. And then there's one behind this pulley. So the way that I did it was I stood it up, like you can see, on its back wheels. And then, actually before I did that, before I stood it up, I put the engine in and put the front two mounting bolts in. That way when I stood it up, it wasn't gonna go sliding around. But you have to get the belt around this idler pulley around the double stack onto the back and get this bracket in place before you can put the two rear mounting bolts on because this one goes through this plate which holds this whole assembly in here and then once you've got all that on then you can go ahead and put in the tensioner spring which just goes along the bottom side here from this hole to that stud. That puts tension on the drive belt. And I did find, because I didn't have the belt on the double stack when I went and did it the first time, and there, there's not enough slack in here, even if this idler's off, there's not enough slack to get this belt around the crankshaft pulley. So I just took the snap ring off here and this whole pulley slides out. That way I could get this belt fed around here, make sure everything was all nice and dandy, put this back on. I left the snap ring off until I was sure that everything was right. So now <laughs> it's got, it seems like the crankshaft drive is always engaged onto the transmission, at least until you hit the brake then you can see that the idler if I can do it 
and the idler releases, which allows slack in the belt. So even though the crankshaft is still spinning, now it's no longer powering the transmission. And apparently I gotta look at something in the front because that was, there's a little bit of restriction there. I'll have to take a look at that. But for right now, anyways, engine looks good. Um, this chain is what comes off the transmission and feeds the back axle. So I don't know if this gearbox was leaking. Um, I'm not sure. But there was an awful lot of grease everywhere. So I guess I'd be willing to bet it's either from here or the back side of this pulley is the actual transmission. Could be from there too. Well, let's lower this down and we'll give you a look at uh, how the engine turned out. So, now that it's all mounted, I got the starter hooked back up again. Um, let's see, what else do we do? Do not have the carburetor hooked up yet, so I don't have, I mean, I could go ahead and do the, the throttle linkage, but I just, I just wanted to get this on. I figured that's a good ending point for today. It's almost dinner time, so I'm going to go eat. Still debating whether or not I'm going to do anything with the red, if I want to give that a paint, a coat of paint or not. Yeah. Um, still waiting on a couple parts. We found out that the float bowl needs to get replaced, so i got to wait on that. i got to run to the hardware store because I need more black paint for the deck. I'll show you that. So I almost got almost a coat. It's it's covering it, and you know, on spots it looks nice. Look right here, that whole edge. But eh, I took a wire wheel on it with my angle grinder and got off all the heavy stuff. But that's as good as it's gonna get. There was uh, quite a bit of rust sitting here in the middle. So I'm gonna do another coat of black on here, and then we can refit the. Or no, I gotta wait for the spacer too. So I'm waiting for a spacer for the deck. I'm waiting for that new float to come for the carb. And I gotta get a battery. We gotta get some oil. So yeah, we got we got things to do. What's going what is this? I don't even know what that is. Our battery's flopping around after being jostled. We'll uh, dig into that stuff here afterwards. I don't know. Haven't tested any of the electronics on it. Uh, fuel tank can go on. So yeah, I'm going to go eat and we'll pick this up tomorrow. Well, things were looking good. I spent... A little bit of time last night it was too dark to really film but got the engine put back on i had to put the old key ignition switch back in the new one that i got was backwards so it was cranked in the off position i'm not really sure why it can only go in one way so it was backwards uh, i came out this morning ready to fire it up before i put any more money into this thing and i found Nice little oil leak back there. So I think that's coming from the sump gasket. That's the only thing that I could figure it would be. Right up in that area. So unfortunately that means we gotta take this whole thing off again. So I gotta drain the oil, stand it back up, take the engine off. I already ordered a sump gasket, but Unless there's a hole in the block that I didn't notice. I mean, that's the only thing it could be, I think. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and take all this off, and I'll bring you guys back once I figure out what's going on. All right, it took me a while to get this uh, double stack pulley off. It was seized down there. Um, just doing a little heat and beat. 
I heated up the whole thing and then uh, ran the pulley bolts back in as far, you know, reasonable way so that way I didn't damage the threads. And uh, just tapped on that with a hammer to break it free. I didn't want to use a puller because if you get a puller on this pulley, it will deform it. Anyways, uh, so this is the area right here where it was leaking from. And that is the sump gasket. So uh, there are six bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that'll all take those off. The sump will come off. And then we can just replace that gasket. So I am going to have to wait for a little while until that gasket gets here. And uh, unfortunately, that's going to put this project on hold. So I will bring you back once uh, we get some parts. So here's the crankcase all split apart. This is the area that the gasket was leaking in, which I believe lands up with the surface. And there, there wasn't really much to note in the gasket itself. Um, you know, there was no parts blown out or anything, but when I separated it, it kind of split right here in this area anyways. So there wasn't really anything definitive that I could show you. Um, I just got done scraping it out, but I mean, this gasket just had it, you know, it's very worn, very brittle. And the weird thing is it seems like it was completely saturated. Like the oil was just seeping out through it. So that was kind of weird. But um, I just got done cleaning everything up. I just use a razor blade. And I'll scrape, scrape the gasket surface off. For the most part, it's not too bad. Like these big flats, you can just peel off. The only parts that are really stuck are right near these bolt holes because that's where most of the tension is applied so it just kind of squishes it right into the surface and that in, in those areas you got to be careful with the razor blade scraping it so you don't gouge this aluminum and also so that way you're scraping away from the crankcase so the debris doesn't fall inside but it's all cleaned up and now we just gotta wait for the new gasket to get here so the front tires weren't holding air. Back one seemed okay. Um, there's nothing visibly askew. They're just kind of, you know, dry rotted a little bit. I don't think it's anything major. I don't think it's worth putting tubes in or anything like that. So I just took valve stem valve stem removal tool took the valve out right there i'm just gonna put some oil in the tire i don't even know what kind of oil this is just atf works it's it's the same principle as uh using like pixel flat or slime i'm just gonna put some oil in here a, a liberal amount and then we'll spin the tire around so that oil coats the inside and then air it up and hopefully that'll pressurize it so that way the oil kind of uh, hydrates the rubber so it can swell and it'll seal up any cracks or air leaks or whatever that we got going on. So unless it's actually the stem that's leaking, this usually does a pretty good job. Like that much. And then put the stem back in. Still waiting on parts. Should be here in a couple days for that gasket. So I'm just trying to find stuff that I can do to, ahead of time. I already got the deck put back together. And Greased all the Zerk fittings, so tires are next. Uh, we can just throw that on. I did lube up the 
wheel spindles. There's a washer here. And a new cotter pin. And then we'll just spin it. Let that coat everything. And then we'll air it up. Like so. I just threw the battery in. Um, I gotta come up with some kind of a hold down for it. It's just sitting loose in there, but I wanted to test the solenoid, which is back there. So I've got, obviously the engine's out, but while I'm waiting, I wanna make sure that the solenoid's good. So I've got a test light grounded to the frame. This is the lead that goes to the starter. So if I can hold this. When I bump the key, that should light up. And it does. So we're getting 12 volts through the solenoid to the starter. Solenoid's good. I think that's about all I can do right now. I'll show you the deck, how that turned out. Uh, I didn't go crazy with the rust removal. That stuff is, I mean, I'd be here for days scraping that out. But I got all the loose stuff off, gave it a quick coat of paint, saved the decals. It looks a lot better. This uh, brake, I can show you. That brake is a little too tight. But it still works. There's plenty of resistance on it, even when I was um, trying to tighten up this nut here. It was keeping the pulley from spinning. So, I mean, it's got this huge, beefy spring on it down there. This is the tension for engaging it. Uh, when you engage the deck, it'll pull the brake away so that way the belt can spin. But I think it came out pretty nice considering what it looked like. So yeah, I think it's going to be about two days before I get that sump gasket. Possibly tomorrow I'll get the um, float bowl and we can get the carburetor put back together and put that on the engine while we're waiting. I'm still waiting on parts. Uh, the float bowl might come today, so maybe we'll head down to the mailbox and check in a little bit, but the sump gasket's going to be another day or two, so I think I'm just going to start working on the seat a little bit. I got some spray Plasti Dip. I've done like the, the paint on Plasti Dip before, and that works pretty good, um, where you just like tape off the area you want to do, but then there's like a... A line of demarcation where it stops and it's pretty visible and it gets kind of gloopy and I, I don't know I just wanted to try this because if I can fill in these cracks then maybe I'll just spray a coat over the whole thing so it kind of blends in we'll see this is just kind of a, a test we could just tape it too and be done with it but I don't think that looks as good so I'm literally just gonna Try to fill in here. It's going to take a lot in these cracks because the foam is just going to soak it up. So I'll just keep hitting it like that. Just trying to keep it light so it doesn't run. It's supposed to wait like 30 minutes in between coats. And uh, once I get a layer in there, so it's not gonna like compress the foam, then I might try to build it up with something. Just to, you know, cause there's a probably a good half inch like in this corner here that's missing foam. You can see that. So. I'll just keep hitting it, but I wanted to get a couple layers in here first just to kind of seal that foam so it's not going to compress, and we'll see how it turns out. Our new gasket came in, and it is 
the correct one, so that's great. I'm going to just throw the sump on here, and we'll run in all the sump bolts, and just get everything kind of put back together. Maybe I'll uh, probably replace this fuel line, and get everything reassembled, which you saw already. Get the card put back on. The new float is somewhere. We'll get that in there and just kind of get everything put back on, but it's the same as what you already saw, just in reverse, so I'm going to skip ahead, and I will bring you back after we have everything put back together. Unless, of course, something interesting pops up, then I will show you guys that. There we go. I'll put back on. we got new fuel lines, new fuel filter. I did throw a new air filter in. Carburetor is on, and leaking so that kind of sucks that's not really a serviceable part I don't think and it also means that the bowl is overflowing so our needle is still needs some work bummer um, let's just uh, I have yet to hear this thing really run so let's just see what happens Choke is on, parking brake is engaged. Nothing. There we go, was in gear. Hmm. What is that? Interesting. Okay. Did our solenoid just pooch out? Huh. Well. That sucks. I was hoping just to uh, have this thing run and be done with it. It's really hot out. I'm tired of working in this heat. Clearly I'm going to have to dig into this a little bit more, but let's shut this fuel off so we're not dripping gas everywhere. Yeah, it's a bummer. Not sure what you can do about that. Well, and this is the sound of a defeated man. Uh, I've been working on this thing for the last couple nights. The solenoid did, in fact, it tested fine on the bench, but it would not, on the machine, it would do nothing. So. I swapped it out with the used one from a different machine, and that works great. The other thing is, I took it off, but there was, um, sitting up here was, uh, they call it the interlock module. It's for all the safety switches. And that would not pass power through either. The seat safety was already removed and bypassed. So I just spliced in a jumper to bypass the interlock that was bad because it's like $138 and I couldn't find a used one. Uh, the battery is low right now so it's not going to spin over but it does turn over and I got it to crank and um, thinking everything's looking good, you know. Couldn't get it to fire, couldn't get it to fire. Took the spark plug out, tested for spark. We had good spark. So then I did a compression test, and I've only got like 30 pounds of compression. So, yeah, um, low compression. I think there's a new head gasket that we put in. It could be a head gasket leak in normal situations. It could be worn piston rings. 
Um, I don't know, the cylinder wall looked really good, so I didn't think that would be the issue. But I'm starting to think that maybe that valve is still hanging up and staying open, so there's no compression because of that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the carburetor, the muffler, air cleaner, get all this out of the way to get at the valve cover behind here and then I'm going to try to spin it over and see, you know, visually see that both valves are moving because if, if one's not moving then we know that one's stuck because if it's open it's not going to get compression. I think that's my plan. Otherwise, I'm not sure where to go. I have a couple other similar engines. This is an 8 horse. I could throw on uh, 11 horse Briggs. But I really just, it's such a pain to get this thing on and off. And I've done it like four times already. Like if I'm going to take this engine off, i got to drain the oil, take the deck back off, sand it up take the you know just do all that stuff and I just don't really want to do that again so I'm hope well either way I mean if we take this all off and we find that the valve is still stuck I still got to take all that off just to get the head off to get that valve out you know drain the oil so it doesn't leak everywhere and it's just yeah I'm kind of kind of irritated but I guess that uh, is to be expected so let's just let's start there and see what's going on if that's not it if the valves are moving then I have no idea what it could be like I said the cylinder wall looked good I didn't take the piston out to inspect the rings but I had no reason to suspect that they were bad we just had a valve issue in the beginning so I would think that it's got to be related to that you know maybe worst case we pick up a new valve or I see if I have one but let's start here well the good news is that when I'm turning it over both valves are moving So it doesn't appear as though one is hanging up. I guess we're going to have to take this whole thing off again. Bring it in the shop. This is uh, the oil I just drained out. This is fresh oil I just put in the other day. It's hard to see because there's a lot of sun out today. But not only is it really dark. I mean this is fresh. It should be relatively clear. There's a definite cloudiness and some ribbon going on so we probably have something bigger going on inside here but i've got it off so let's bring it in the shed and uh, bust it open see what's going on so a few things um got it apart i must have been thinking about a different engine because this cylinder is not the cleanest there's no huge scratches or anything um, so I'm not seeing anything like super obvious but it's definitely not as clean as I thought and I, like I can't catch anything with a nail or anything the exhaust valve yeah we should have lapped and Set the clearance on that, but then look at this starter gear, man. I can't believe it was even turning over. So we'll need a new drive gear. Um, I guess our RTV silicone gasket that we did was not quite up to snuff. A lot of this was leaking out from the valve cover when I took it out, but it was leaking out of here right where that gasket is, so. Oh. Unfortunately, that means I gotta separate the sump, and that'll, you know, we should probably do that anyways, because I think I'm gonna take 
the piston out, check the rings. Um, see if there's anything else going on inside. And if all that checks out, we will lap the valves, set the clearance, redo the silicone gasket, get a new ring gear, all that stuff. So let me just keep working on getting some of this disassembled. It's for the most part, it's everything that I've shown you so far. I'm just going to flip it over, take the sump uh, off, and also, let's see if I can flip this up. I think our main seal's leaking too. So yeah, a lot of stuff to do still. Well, another little surprise. This is not the engine that had the RTV. This one had a gasket. I forgot. This one, we put a new gasket in. The RTV one was the Poulan Pro. So, I don't know why. Maybe we just didn't torque it enough, I guess. That's the only thing I could think. But, at least inside, I'm not sure why the... Um, Oil came out so dirty, you know, maybe we just got to clean it better this time, but it was just cloudy and ribbony and made me feel like there was some metal chewed up inside, but I don't see anything right off the bat. So we will uh, take the governor, let me get a, a bin real quick. Okay, governor, and I will clean all this stuff up before it goes back in. Hmm. It's hard to do this one-handed. I guess I should get you guys set up here in the tripod. That's a little better. So, where's our timing mark is all the way around. That's... Right there. Camshaft. Like the teeth don't look worn at all. Lifters look fine. No. Was that? Was that ring gear off? I'm gonna have to check the foot. Maybe that pulled up with the cam. Because if that was off, then there'd be no timing. Well, we're in here already. I'm not gonna make the mistake of half assing this again. We're gonna go through and do it all. Just so that way I know that I gave it my best effort and hopefully we'll have better results this time. So wonder if I have to take this arm off first. Counterweight. And then now I can see the oh the connecting rod bolts. Of course you guys can't see. Come off. I gotta get. Oh, you know what, too? I gotta take the flywheel off. Bummer. All right. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead, get these two bolts out, and then I'll flip it over, 
take the flywheel off so the crankshaft can come out and then we can get the piston out and move on. Well, I think we found our no compression problem. You can tell these rings are stuck. Bottom one is moving the oil seal. This one is stuck in place. And so is this one. So we're going to have to try to either get these freed up or break them out and get new ones and clean this one up. That one's pretty filthy too, but no compression if the rings are seized. So that is our issue. And we didn't know that the first time because we did not dive this far into it. So let's see how we can, I mean, now that we're in here, you know, we'll hone the cylinder wall. I'm pretty convinced that this will come back once we get this taken care of because there's really, there's, there's no reason for it not to at this point. It's like I said, it's not that the cylinder walls are scored. That would be kind of, you know, the death of the machine because that's like irreparable damage to cause low compression. But as far as I'm concerned, this is, um, I guess best case scenario, you know, we just get these rings freed up. How we're gonna do that? Not quite sure yet. You know, maybe we'll just soak them in some penetrating fluid. We could probably put them in the ultrasonic cleaner. You know, get a little heat in there. Just try to break that free. Cause there's no, there's no plastic in here, except for this bottom seal. There might be. No. So I think I'm just going to work on that. I get this all cleaned up again. The coil's looking kind of cruddy too. But that's not what we're working on. We had spark, so I'm not worried about that, even though it doesn't look the greatest. So let me, uh, I guess we don't need to take the flywheel off because I don't think that's the issue. And the crankshaft, you can see back in there. Crankshaft, crankshaft journal looks pretty good. There's some minor wear on it, but uh, connecting rod, it looks okay. We got minor wear, nothing that you can catch a nail on. So I've put together worse and had them run, so I think this is going to be fine. We just got to get the um, piston rings cleaned up. Well, I had the piston in the ultrasonic cleaner, and the rings did expand as I expected with the heat. However, they did not want to come out, and you can see why. They're just rusted up into place. I was hoping to get them out, maybe clean them up on some fine sanding paper, but nope. So I'm going to have to order some rings. And I need to order an oil seal for the crankshaft oil seal. I took this one out because it was leaking. So on the sump cover, and I think I'm going to get a new head gasket, even though this one is brand new. It got a little chewed up from being torqued down, and yeah, so looks like we're going to be waiting on parts again. This project is taking forever. Um... The ring gear has a pin in here that holds it all together, and I have cannot get this out. Uh, this is all plastic, so I can't use any heat on it. So I've just got some penetrating fluid. Hopefully that's going to soak and do its thing. I just got to get this 
pin out and then roll pin. That's the word I was looking for, roll pin. Get this roll pin out, this all pop off. I do have what might be the right one. This was for another Briggs. So hopefully that's the right one. At least save me a part. But yeah, I got the valves lapped, holding the cylinder wall. It's uh, better, but not perfect. But still, no major scoring going on, so that looks pretty good. But yeah, I gotta wait for the piston rings, the seal, head gasket. And then we can move on to see if this thing will decide to work. Parts came in so we can start getting some stuff put back together. This was the ring kit that was, uh, said it was for this piston. It seems like it's way too big. I don't know. I mean, I know that the, um, the ring gap is supposed to close down pretty tight. So maybe that's right. Um, we're just going to line everything up. I'm going to get some assembly lube ready to go because we got a lot to do. And I want to line... It's hard because these things are so loose. They just want to flop around. But I want to get them roughly 120 degrees. So this ring gap here, the middle ring here, top ring here. And I'm just going to put a light coat of assembly lube along the whole piston just to kind of coat these rings, help them slide around, and the piston itself too. And that one slid. Something like that. So there's a dot here, or an indentation, that points towards the flywheel. Sometimes there's a dot, this one has an indentation. So we can set it on the cylinder head like so. And then, can you guys see? I'm gonna take my ring compression tool This will tighten up those rings until it's flush with the piston. And then we should hopefully be able to drive it all into place. So we'll get that into position. Take a big heavy hammer, use the back side, drive it down. Of course, it helps to get the snake shaft into position. This assembly lube that I'm using is Permatex Ultra Slick. I just put it in a container like this so I can use a little. Uh, soldering brush and I'm going to brush this lube on any friction point. So the journal, connecting rod, pretty much at any point that I get to a spot where there's going to be something moving. We got one ring hanging up. Yeah, it's not getting in there. Get a little bit further.
The uh, piston tool is not not doing the greatest. You can see we got one and a half rings. So we gotta try to get these other ones compressed. Here we go, that should do it. And we're in. <clears throat> now we just want to seat it on the crankshaft, which that seems pretty good. So I guess those those rings must be good. I mean, they seem large for me, but. I guess, uh, I guess it was all right. So now we dig out parts. We've got the other half for our connecting rod. And again, this is going to get the same lube because this is a friction point. I'd like to get it so you guys can see what I'm doing, but man, I'm running out of space. So this top one, there's the little retainer ring here. I kept it so that way the bolt was in the top. And I'm just going to try to get that started. Which is easier said than done. Because the, there's like three different parts you're trying to mate together. The crankshaft to the to the connecting rod, and then there's also the con or the conno weight arm. Um, this was half inch, I believe. We can just get one lined up. I think we're threading in. Yeah. Okay, so. It's just tight. 
Right now I don't have room to get a socket in. It would be easier if I could drive the piston down a little bit further and get um, a little bit more room to work with, but sometimes it's easier to just get the connecting rod started. I'm going to have to get room in here to get a socket so that way I can torque it, but um, the cylinder wall is, is dry right now. I, I could have put that assembly lube in the whole cylinder wall, and I will after I get it down all the way. I just wanted to get this connecting rod started so that way we had a little bit of a capture progress. If that makes sense. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get this one snug so that way it doesn't flop around and then we should be able to move it around a little bit like one cohesive unit and then I can get the other one in Almost there. I don't want this one to be tight yet. I just want it to be snug to the point where it's all going to move together. Kind of like that. I take my other bolt. be able to get that started. Now I can go ahead with my half inch socket. I did find torque specs on this. Uh, let's see here. The connecting rod torque is 185 inch pounds. So that's like 13 foot pounds. Where would that be? No, that's a little bit more. That's um, 15 foot pounds. But now at least I have room to get this bottom one. Drive this in get it torqued, and then we can rotate everything together. And there's one. I gotta get this other one. Oh, I'm not quite. There we go.
Yeah. So there's those two torqued. Now we've got, let's see. These little um, keepers, those lock the, uh, the bolts from coming loose. So we gotta tap this down. There's one. There's two. <clears throat> that way those don't come loose. So those are set. Okay. Now we can go ahead and put the other counterweight arm in. This should just slip on here. But I'm gonna go ahead and put some lube on here. Oh, I forgot something already. This part goes in first. This is like uh the linkage for the counterweights to keep them connected together. So just lube each position that slides in. And it should keep them align together Not sure why I'm having a hard time with that one. Should just slide right into position. Like that. And then this top counterweight will fit on there. Probably because gravity is fighting against us. Hmm. 
And I got the top in. I think we're missing on the bottom still. There we go. That's better. Okay, so then this bolt holds the two counterweights together. I think this was 10 mil. And I don't have a torque spec for this one. So we'll just keep it about the same. Nope, not 10 mil. Must be half inch or maybe 7 sixteenths. 7 sixteenths. Now we can go through and do our our two lifters. We'll lube them. Like so, the camshaft, actually we need the ring gear first. I'm not sure why that's so tight. There we go. Get that on the key. Now we can see our timing mark, little dot. right here. So we want to line that up. In the general position of where the camshaft is going to go, I'm going to lube the bottom here. Put a little bit on these cam lobes. And then the dot for the timing is here. So those two have to line up. Like so. So now dot to dot, those two line up. Now I'll just put a little lube on this ring gear. Doesn't make a huge difference, but it helps lubricate where the um, camshaft meets it. I don't put it on the crankshaft for the ring gear because that is a stationary object. It's held in position by that key. I 
governor who sits like so. Okay, that's that half. Now, we can make some room. Put our gasket. This gasket did leak, but I think I over torqued it. I did like 14 or 18 pounds. And when I saw the specs later, it was more like 12, I think. So we'll just leave that there for now. This is the old crankshaft seal. The new one is somewhere. It's in my pocket. New crankshaft seal. It goes in the bottom here. You got this side with the um, I don't know what you want to call it, the lip that faces in. Give that a little tap. It's helpful to have a socket that's roughly the right size. That'll fit within that ring, but still be on the outer race or the outer edge of that seal so it doesn't deform it. Like so. The noise changes when you're hitting it so you know that it's all the way in position. And I'm just going to make sure that this ceiling surface is clean and then that can go in place like so we've got let's see here these six Bolts two three four they should all be half inch and we want to be at 140 inch pounds so we'll back this up to 12 foot pounds and I'm gonna First, zip these in with the um, impact just to get them tight. Not tight, but just to drive them in. I'm stopping when I get to any sort of resistance. And then now we can go ahead and do our 12 foot pounds in the crisscross fashion. There's one, two, three, four. Five, six, and then I'll just come through and do each one once more.
There's that. Now we can go ahead and do the valves. I did lap these valves. And check the valve clearance. So they should both be good to go. That being said, I don't like doing valves because it's difficult for me. But a little bit more lube on the valve stem. That's the exhaust valve. It was interesting to me that these two valves have different style keepers. This one has the, the two split magnetic keepers and the other one is like the positional type. I just got to get this started because I got to put the retaining washer in here. That's usually what happens. Right. No. That's the other one. Yeah, I'm this is the uh, intake valve. Yeah, so then. So let's, let's get everything out. I gotta get this, this uh, keeper washer in place on the spring first. And then collapse it. I'm okay. Let's see if I can just smell this one. Looks good. There's one. This one has the magnetic split keepers, which, uh, it doesn't really matter, I mean, I kind of suck at both, so, it's got this big one here. You collapse the whole thing, stick that through, and then you've got these, there's two of these little tapered keepers, like these magnet. And even then, it's still a struggle. Mm. I'm trying to open that intake valve to close the exhaust valve so I have a little bit more room to get this into position. Okay, there's one. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. So I'm going to try to rotate. I'm sure you guys have a better way of doing this, but... Oh, you got to be kidding me. Magnetic tip screwdriver. It's good. Maybe I can do the... Ah, it's, it's just... It's tight, you know, there's not a lot of room. You can do like the two sides, I guess that would be better. Yep, there's one. Got a better position. You guys get the picture. 
I'm going to struggle with this for probably another hour. I'll bring you back when I'm done. I right, finally, <coughs> finally got those uh, valve springs in. I'm going to go ahead and put the valve gasket and the valve cover back into place. And there's a little retainer for this wire. I'm not the kill for the um, coil or the ground. One and two. Five sixteenths. Run this in. Okay, that's good. Now we can move on to the head. Like I said, we did get a new head gasket. because this other one was just a little chewed up. Those are all garbage. Where's the head? Here's the head. So, I think we wanna be So, there's a couple different shrouds that have to go into position, so you should find them like so. And what else am I missing? This one. This one holds fuel tanks, so that's gonna be like that. We got our spark plug. Keep everything clean so we don't get anything, any contaminants in there. I'm still waiting on the parts to rebuild the starter, but I figure we can uh, get some of this put back together. So these are half inch. I'm just going to round them down. Same thing, until we get uh, any resistance. I'm not torquing them right now. Just getting them tight. So now these ones, let's see here, cylinder head. Cylinder head is 165 foot pounds or inch pounds. So, what would that be? Like 15 foot pounds? Because. Fifteen and a half or fourteen and a half, I guess. Dipstick. 
And let's see here. How we do our shroud. Got that. We got our fuel tank. Got air cleaner. We got muffler. So. Dipstick. It's held by this guy. These other ones are are they three eighths or seven sixteenths? Seven sixteenths, I believe. Yeah. There's four. <clears throat> There's a trying to get everything lined up. There we go. One. Two. The funny thing about <coughs> all of this, I still don't know if this is going to be a viable machine. We got a lot of <clears throat> a lot of time and parts invested in this machine. And it's not even that valuable of a machine. It's just it's just that it's kind of a perfect machine for a family member. So that's who it's going to go to. So we're <clears throat> trying to get this all together but I don't know what's gonna happen yet now we've got to do the carburetor before we do the exhaust and that was fun before because Need this linkage in first for the choke. Actually, you know what? Um, we gotta get the position figured out first. Like so, then the breather tube. So we got this little screw for this um, hanger. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it. It's just kind of a support for the carburetor, and then oh, you know what? Hold on. Before we do any securing, we have to get the other linkage put in. The other linkage for the throttle. <clears throat> throttle linkage is on. Choke linkage is on. The boot for the vacuum tube. Is on. I'm not going super tight right now. Because I know there's going to be some wiggling around. We've got a two intake screws for the carburetor mount. The hardest thing about this whole thing is coming up next. 
I gotta try to get those little the little spring for the <clears throat> for the throttle linkage put in. And yes, it, in normal situations, it's usually easier to do that when the uh, carburetor is loose. But I found last time that there's just too many moving parts. So I'm going to try to, there's one side. Because the problem is you can't really... See the other side. <clears throat> and I think we just came off. That one's on. Yeah, that one came off. Probably doing wonders for all the paint that we did. God dang it. It came off again. Yeah, that was too easy. This, uh, this spring has uh, definitely seen better days. And so it's been bent and rebent. So I gotta try it out if I can. Hold tension on it while I get it. Put it in this other side. All right, that's in. So, because we had to bend the throttle linkage a little bit, I got to bend it out a little bit. Otherwise, there's going to be too much restriction. Same thing with the spring. I'm sure you guys have no idea what I was just doing, but <clears throat> it's kind of hard to get a good shot. Oh, yeah. So then this... muffler drops into place and I've got I should have a screw for it right here and these are all 7 16 so I can zip them in good. The air cleaner. Simple enough. And I think that's all we can do for now. We have to 
mount the starter back on once we get the parts for it, but I don't have them yet. Luckily, that's as simple as, you know, these two 3 8 bolts. And I think it goes like so. Well, perhaps, perhaps we can put it on now and um, <clears throat> still get at everything that we need once those parts come in. Wait, those are half inch. So we just got to put those parts on. We've got, you know, these parts that failed. It really wasn't, this is a new ring gear. So this could go on, but there's a cap on top that broke. So we need that. And I want to put that on before we put the fuel tank on. So I think we're done for tonight. I will wait till those parts come in and we can finish this up. Probably going to have to paint this again because look at that. I mean, it just doesn't hold up. Like the Rust-Oleum, whatever, you know, like the normal paint that you get a bit at a big box store, just it doesn't, uh, doesn't last. Yeah, that's all I have for parts. Um, Fuel tank has to go on, and then the whole seat can, or the whole engine, we can throw that back in. But that's it for tonight. All right, I've had this thing on and off several times now. Uh, I didn't record it because you already saw me take it apart. It's the same thing going back together. And it's a good thing because, like I said, I had to take it apart a few times. I kept having gas sticking out through this little port. Which is no good because that means then it's overflowing the float. And actually, when I would spin this over just by hand, I get a little gas coming out the exhaust before I had the muffler on. So I had to swap out a couple different needles uh, just to get one that was long enough to shut off the fuel. It's been sitting here for, I don't know, five or ten minutes. And this one seems like it's doing okay. If the problem persists I don't know I might have to just go ahead and get a new carburetor I didn't want to do that because I would have to get a aftermarket one a OEM Briggs one for this Venturi style is like it's over a hundred bucks so for $27 I would just get an aftermarket one but I wanted to use this one if it was all you know if it was possible so we're gonna roll with this needle and hopefully we don't have any more issues Everything is buttoned back up. I did get the starter put on and the gas tank. So parts came in for the starter. Essentially just replacing this and the gear and the little cap that sits on top. The part that you saw me break the other night. So I think we're ready to go ahead and throw this on the machine. Like I said, you've already seen me do that. I'm just going to uh, skip ahead to when we're all ready to fire it up. All right, we got the, got a new battery put in. Filled up the oil. This took 40 ounces. I did put the old interlock module back in. I cleaned up the, the terminals best I could. They are all greasy. Not sure what the what the deal is with that, but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot one more time. I did find an aftermarket one, just a generic interlock module. So if this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to order that. I just I don't feel comfortable having all of the safety interlocks off. There is a bypassed seat safety. I was looking in here. I wanted to add the seat safety back in, but I don't even know where it would go. I, I don't know, maybe it goes to the seat. I 
like right there. Maybe that makes sense. I'm not quite sure. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more, see if I can figure it out because like I said, it's right here. I can just run a, a circuit up to there if I had to. The seat, we have that installed. My Plasti Dip, the spray Plasti Dip didn't do a whole lot. I put like 10 coats on here. And I thought maybe I would fill in these voids with like some uh, uh, like right stuff, the expanding foam, and then just trim it. But I didn't have any. And uh, this thing is costing too much as it is. So we're going to leave it like that. At least the foam is sealed, so it's not going to get wet. The spray did a decent job. You know, there's some runs here. But it was nice because at the end I could just come back and do a whole coat over the whole thing. So it kind of evened it out. I think in the future I would do the liquid kind to paint in these voids. Because when I was trying to spray, you know, inevitably you'd get some up here and then it would run. But to get it in the void, you could paint it in. Maybe do some foam. And then at the end, once they're all evened up, then do a final coat with the spray to make it match, but we'll tap on this thing and see with everything that we got. I suppose I don't even really need to be on here with the seat safety off. Our deck is all the way up. I'm gonna go to choke. The, de the deck is disengaged. Yeah, we still have nothing. So I'm guessing, well, I'm assuming it's that interlock module there. So for the time being, I think I'm going to disconnect it and we'll go ahead, put my old splice back in there and see if we can get it to function and fire run and drive you know without it and then we'll go from there so here's what I came up with just a three wire jumper um, from what I can tell yellow and orange are the two different safety circuits and blue is voltage from the key switch and they travel to this interlock module that does some magic and tells the allows the engine to fire after it completes both of the safety circuits. So with that in place, at least before, I was getting it to crank. Oh, you know what? I should probably turn the fuel on. But as you heard, it does crank, so that's good. Okay, fuel is on. No, we're in gear. Okay. Yeah, that one's clutch. Still sounds like we don't have compression. Okay, I don't know if I had the camera on, but compression was about 60, 55 PSI, which is still pretty low. And we're leaking fuel. So this carb is no good. It wants to go. We're getting smoke. I think it
I think that carb is flooding the engine. Yeah, it's just pouring out of here. Uh, I'm going to look at some of the other parts machines that I have to see if I have a similar style carburetor. Maybe we'll rob that and throw it on here just to test it before we give up. I got a different car put on here. This is, it looks like an aftermarket one. It's almost, you know, it looks brand new. It's fairly clean on the outside. I did have to take it apart and clean out the interior because it had been sitting exposed to the elements. So I wish I was recording here like two minutes ago because I had the muffler off still. And I was like, I'm going to crank it over just to see if there's any fuel that comes out um, in case it had been flooding. And uh, the thing fired right up. And uh, I couldn't kill it with the ignition switch. That would not shut it off. So I was like, oh, I'll just I'll take the brake off. Forgetting that I had bypassed all of the interlocks. And apparently it's in gear because it just it started taking off for me. So I had to chase after it and um, disconnect the spark plug. So I'm not sure why the ignition switch didn't kill it. But the good thing is that it fired right up. Um, bad news is that the mounting holes for the air cleaner are the wrong size. So either I keep this carb, this came off an 11 horse Briggs. So I could keep this carb and get a different air cleaner or just get an aftermarket carburetor and then reuse the air cleaner that I have. So I gotta weigh the pros and cons. I gotta look up prices and see what is gonna be a better option for us. Um, and we gotta dig into that ignition switch, but let me get the spring for the throttle hook back up and then we'll fire it up. All right, I got my uh, engine kill switch. Choke is on. Check and see if we have gas in here. And we do. Sure what's going on. We've got good spark. We've got fuel. The compression was adequate because it fired it up a couple of times. As soon as you go to lower it off High throttle, it just dies. Oh, I want to 
wanted to put it in gear and take it for a ride for a dive. Yeah, so this car probably isn't the greatest either, but... Yeah. The detents in the, in the transmission gear, it's kind of hard to find neutral. I'm not sure, but the good news is that it runs and it drives at least that far. So that being said, I think, I think our best bet is to just get a new carb because it seems like we're still having a fuel issue. Granted, I don't have the air cleaner on here, so maybe that has something to do with it, but it should still run a little bit more prolonged than what we we're getting. So I, I'm not sure. Um, this project has gone on forever. But uh, we're close. It runs. It drives. I just need to get that interlock module, and a new carburetor. It's been a few days and I've been working at night after my kids go to bed. I've, this project has taken way too long and I'm trying to get it wrapped up. Um, I've been on family leave. We, for I've been on family leave for like three months now and I have to go back to work next week. So I'm trying to get this project finished. So I had to kind of jump ahead at night. Um, we got a new carburetor. I could not get the other one to stop flooding. I tried out different um, needles, different floats, all kinds of different stuff. I cleaned it out, I polished the seat, nothing worked. So we did, I can't remember, I think I tested a different carb, but the air cleaner didn't fit. And instead of getting a new air cleaner and filter to match that carburetor, I just got a new carburetor to match the one that I already had. So that came in Put it on, uh, fired up right away. My daughter and I took the sink for a spin. A um, couple things. We could not get the throttle to come down once we were on, once we had it, you know, opened up to, to drive it and stuff. So I was messing around here. I wanted to clean up this plate for the throttle and, and uh, choke. And... Um, because I thought it maybe it was just restricted. There was a lot of dirt and grease and stuff in there. Cleaned it up, put some new grease in, and then I realized it was just this cable retaining screw. It was too tight, so it was impacting the lever back here. But now it seems to be moving freely, and then when you're on high idle or high throttle, so it would just get stuck open like that. So now I can... The governor should be able to adjust it accordingly. Uh, second thing, when we were done, I could not get it to shut off with the key. I had to disconnect the spark plug to kill spark to it. Um, so I dug into the coil and the terminal on the back of the coil, the cable had just completely disintegrated. So I cleaned that up. Put in a new wire here, 
got everything, you know, put back together on the, the insulator that mounts this to the throttle plate. And now it wouldn't start. So I checked, took the spark plug off, and I didn't have any spark. Well, come to find out, this insulator was not set up correctly. They had it where I just put it back on the way that I took it off. And both of these were in like that. And this was connected to the throttle plate. So when that, in that situation, it's always grounded. And it defeats the whole purpose of the insulator, which is to insulate it from the throttle plate. So that way it only grounds when you want it to. Uh, come to find out, I was looking at getting a new insulator and on the parts diagram, it shows that they're supposed to be on the back side here. They're supposed to be like an elbow. So it would come out like that. So one of the leads would connect to that on the back side. And one would connect on the front side. I still don't know which one would be which. But that must have broken. And it kind of looks like it was broken. But I'm not totally sure at any rate the new one the new part shows that it has the little tab there so like thinking this through I would think that you know this would be I'm not gonna put it in all the way because it's kind of a pain to get out but this would be sticking in here I would think that this would be on connected here this is your key switch because that doesn't matter if that's grounded right and then I would think that this would have just like a pushed out uh, terminal end and that would clip onto that tab in the back. So then I I'm sh still don't know exactly how this would function. This would, so it doesn't actually ground to the frame. It just grounds the insulator insulates it from the frame and then the signal from the key switch goes through the frame so basically it just holds it so then I was thinking well why can't you just connect these two together that would do the same thing right long story short I don't have an insulator it's another 10 bucks I'm tired of bit putting parts I've got almost $300 into this machine and this is, uh, normally I wouldn't go this far. Uh, I take that back. I probably would. Because now it's a matter of principle. Like, I've already put in this much money. I should kind of see it through, right? Um, but this is going to go to a family member who needs a riding mower. And so it, it's kind of a perfect machine for them. And so I want to kind of get this thing figured out so that way it works for them. So what I'm thinking is before I go cutting these cables to put in some new ends, I want to just kind of move them out of the way here. We'll connect these two together, make sure it still fires up and runs. And then if that's the case, I'm just going to cut these and splice them together. I think that would do the same thing that the insulator does. It's just, it's not going to have a, you know, a, a, a place to mount. And maybe we could just like zip tie it to the throttle plate. So let's start there. All right, there's still no safeties on here. I still have that bypass. I'm waiting for the interlock module to get here. I think it's coming today. Uh, we'll leave the air filter off for now. I just have those two nutted together and away from the frame. So let's see here. This full choke, you got to kind of hold it up, which is good because before you, I couldn't get it all the way up in the choke, but let's see what we got. Oh, 
Oke. Okay. It's doing the same thing it was doing before. Why is that? I did, I swapped this solenoid in from a different machine. I had ordered one. I had ordered a solenoid, but I didn't want to wait, so I took this one off a different machine and it worked, so I left it. But maybe that one is <clears throat> having problems now, or who knows. And now we have nothing. Okay. I tell you, this machine, I'm getting pretty tired of it. Tired of looking at it, tired of seeing it, and I lost my nut. I'm not getting anything across the solenoid. I got 12 volts on the battery side. Nothing on the starter side. Oddly enough, when I tried to jump the solenoid post, I couldn't even get spark. So I'm not sure why that would be, because if we got 12 volts, we should get 12 volts across, but let's just throw in the new one. New solenoid is in. Let's see if this does any better. Unbelievable. It's gotta be, it's gotta be my little jumper here then or something for the safety bypass. All right, I've got two different jumpers, one for the seat safety and one for the interlock module. One of them must have had a loose connection. Because we're turning over now. I gotta try to hold choke at the same time. And we're flooding over. I wonder if we don't have spark because these are connected. Let's just check. Okay, disconnected. Okay, so when those connect, that's what grounds it. So it looks like I'm gonna have to Get myself a new insulator, which is kind of a bummer because I thought I could just splice these two together, but clearly that wouldn't work. That would kill Spark altogether. So I want to look at my other machines and see if I have one that I can steal. And if not, I guess I'll be ordering a $10 insulator. I got that insulator put in right here and it took me a little uh, figure, figuring out which direction the prong should go. Originally I was going to put it this way to make it you know easier to connect it in the back. Then I had it up but then it was getting the wire was getting in the way of these the choke linkage and whatnot. So then I put it down so you can see that this black lead comes from the coil and then on this side the post is just connected to the blue from the ignition switch. So let's test it out. Go choke. First we want to make sure that we have spark and it'll start. Start. And it shuts off with the switch.
So I don't know how exactly that's supposed to work. I still can't wrap my head around it. It didn't work when we had them directly connected together because we had no spark. But for whatever reason, the magic that happens in that little plastic thing, that worked. So that's good. Uh, for Also, while we're at it, uh, I did put this new interlock module in. That is not working. While it allows the circuit to complete and we can fire it up, I've tested it with the transmission and gear and that should uh, be one of the safeties right here. So that should stop it from firing. Also, I have not tried it with the deck engage, but that is another safety. Those are the only two safeties that we have on this machine. I don't think there's a brake interlock and the seat interlock is bypassed. So I don't really know why that's not working. Like I said, I've got uh, blue is power from the switch. And that's coming into this red one. I figured that would be it. And then on the interlock, it's got two yellows. And the machine interlocks, there's an orange for the transmission and a yellow for the deck. So there's not really too many other ways you can try it. I just, I don't know. So I'm going to button the cover back on put the air cleaner back on, wrap everything up, and then maybe we'll take this for a spin and test out the deck. All right, let's take this for a little cruise and then uh, try the deck. Or not. Okay, what's going on? We just had this thing running. Literally just fired. Now we're having that same wannabe solenoid problem. This is the third solenoid. Literally had it running. All I did was put the cover back on. There's no restrictions. Nothing stopping us. But I'm getting no voltage. So let's see if maybe our seat bypass came loose. This is temporary and it's not the best. And I think that was our problem last time. Nope. So maybe one of these bullet connectors came loose. That started to turn. Oh, like I said, I'm getting real tired of this. Alright. So that's going to have to be addressed. The, one of my uh, bullet connectors is loose and it's kind of stretched out, so I'll have to look into that. Oh, 
left gear. It's kind of loud with the uh, exhaust right behind you. That's yeah, it's smoking a little bit. So it runs, it drives, it cuts. I have to look into the interlock safety system a little bit more if I want to, or I could just be done with this thing. Well guys, I don't know where to begin. Uh, it's been a day. I just drove this thing over here to my staging area for selling because I'm done. Done, done. Um, it runs, it drives, cuts. Unfortunately, I had to go the nuclear option. The Safety interlock has been deleted, as has the safety seat interlock, as has the deck interlock. I had to remove all interlocks, redo the grounds, rewire the ignition switch, because power was coming from the solenoid, so it was power to the solenoid, and then from the solenoid to the switch. Now it's direct power to the switch and then a signal to the solenoid, which is the white or the yellow. The solenoid has a new ground. And even after doing all of that, I still could not get this thing to run. I'm kind of ashamed. I was about to give up. And then uh, it's, not like it, it's not a fuse issue. There's only one fuse in here, and this one's good. What it ended up being was, I almost don't want to tell you guys, the battery terminals were dirty on the cables. I thought that they were clean enough, but they weren't. So now, at least, fires right up, shuts off when you want it to with the key switch. So yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I put way too much money in this thing. I spent like $300 on parts. And more importantly, more too much time. I've been working on this thing for like a month. And this was supposed to be a gift to a family member. But I don't know if I want to give it to them with no safeties. And for that matter, I don't even know if I can sell it with no safeties. So, I mean, maybe I can sell it for parts. I'll be lucky if I get back the 300 I got invested in it. I don't know. This thing is just, I'm, like I said, I'm done. I don't want to look at it anymore. So, I don't know if perhaps the interlocks were working and the battery cable being dirty like that very well could have been the issue. And now I'm not going to go back and put them all back in. I just, I, I, I can't. I mean, I could, but I'm saying, like, personally, I just can't. I can't work on this thing anymore. So I'm going to take a loss on this one, more than likely. But I just wanted to wrap this thing up here because, like I said, I'm done. So this video is going to be done. Until next time, hopefully we'll have better success, but thanks for watching.